Disclaimer! Hey, look, an album review. It's been a bit ever since I've done one. To be honest, I haven't done an album review in this long because most albums I've listened to have just ended up being kind of the same. They're either just meh or boring and I have nothing to say about any of them. But with this new Oliver Tree album, Ugly is Beautiful, I actually do have something to say. So without further ado, let's start this review. Oh, yeah. Me, Myself, and I is a perfect blend of rock and trap. For the first 50 seconds, the track is this high-energy rock song, and then you get to the second half of the hook, where the drum beat comes in as a trap beat, and the instrumental switches to have the same sound of the rock song, but going along with the trap vibe. The song continues switching between these two styles for the rest of the track length, all while Oliver sings about how people shouldn't fear saying something stupid, and then he prefers being stupid over being silent. Speaking of Oliver, the mixing on his vocals on here is very distorted, complementing the track's vibe. It's an enjoyable experience from start to finish, and it sets the vibe of the entire album. Very good opening track. Nineteen ninety three shows that this album isn't going to be contained to one sound. After going from a rock trap hybrid, you get a trap pop distorted synth wave banger. The structuring of the song is also really unique, with this distorted synth playing a few notes, and then you get a break of the bass line. After that is the first verse, pre chorus, and chorus, but instead of going straight from the chorus to the verse, you get that synth and bass line in between the two. And the same goes from going to the chorus to the outro verse done by Lil Ricky, who has a ton of distortion put on his voice. And then the song just completely switches into this distorted trap banger for the last 20 seconds and the transition is so smooth it's a groove all throughout and an excellent showing of how this album is going to play out musically including the next track Cash Machine has this album going from hard rock trap with a little bit of synthwave all the way to pop rock mixed with trap. The song is about how money doesn't make you happy and how you shouldn't waste your life trying to get a ton of it and spend it all on materialistic things. And again, it's over a hybrid of pop rock and trap. There's not much else I can say about the song other than that it's enjoyable and it continues showing the listener that his album is going to be through a trip of genres. Let Me Down is another hard rock trap hybrid with a pop rock intro written as an apology towards the fan after Oliver had to cancel his album due to coronavirus. I guess his album took a family guy turn. It's a short banger in my opinion, it's an odd addition to the album, but it's still a semi-enjoyable experience, especially given the continuation of genre bending. Miracle Man is an alternative indie pop rock hybrid about not wasting your life waiting for a miracle to happen and to actually work towards what you want your life to be. Lyrically, it's very repetitive, but the instrumental and structuring of the music makes it a very enjoyable listen. Bury Me Alive is the biggest example so far of the genre bending and the all over the place sound this album brings. It starts off with a groovy pop esque beat for the choruses, and then during the verses, it goes in this weird Brockhampton type beat with Oliver angry rapping about his drug abuse and it killing him, sending him straight to the devil. And the rhyme scheme on the verse-verse alone is insanely impressive. And he also ends it off calling the devil Lucy, which is probably a very basic thing, but for me it just makes me think of To Pimp a Butterfly. <laughs> and then the bridge is kind of a nice blend of the music in the chorus and the verse. It's an insane track and probably one of the best both lyrically and musically. When you fall down... Bruh. Alien Boy has Oliver rapping about being a weird outcast, almost an alien on Earth, but how it shouldn't matter because who cares about being normal and we should all love who we are. All on this weird pop rap beat that kind of complements the lyrical topic of the song. The song also gets this tiny little beautiful section during the second verse and bridge that kind of sounds like how space would sound if it was in music form, which could go with the theme of being an alien boy or alien girl. It's a weird, enjoyable, groovy, catchy anthem for all weird kids who feel like outcasts. I like it. I guess the truth. Jokes on You has Oliver rapping over an aggressive horror vibe beat and how people will judge someone and laugh at them while that person has no idea what's so funny because they don't see their flaws as a bad thing. It's basically power move the song. And to continue with the genre bending, you have the song going from the horror rap beat to a rock song during the bridge and it's done so smoothly. Once again, not much to say about it other than it's great at the genre bending and it's a good song. Hey. 
again and again is a rock anthem about getting over bad events that continue to happen again and again. To basically overcome and change what's going on to cause those bad events to happen, and to, like said during the pre-chorus, keep your head up through it all. And the transition musically between the verse and the pre-chorus is so smooth, and the song just sounds so clean and great along with feeling so groovy. The song also has Oliver hitting those high notes at the end of the verses, which I've become numb to high notes due to them being overused by a lot of people. High notes are like the fast rapping of singing. It's an amazing talent, but it's so oversaturated at this point. But because I'm not a massive fan of Oliver, and this is the first time I'm actually listening to his music, we're nine tracks in, and I've heard just kind of low-key, low-note singing, so the high notes are very impressive. Overall, a great motivational song. On fire. Spoiler alert, this is my favorite song on the album. It starts off sounding very weird. I don't know exactly how to explain it, and I can't really pinpoint a genre that it sounds like it's being in. And then you get to the chorus, where it sounds like this classic pop song I would have listened to back in junior high, and it kind of reminds me a bit of Hey Ya by Outkast. And it is so goddamn enjoyable. The song's about how you shouldn't waste your time, because we don't have enough of it in the day to do everything, so make your time worth it. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the orchestral trap outro. Just more examples of how genre-bending this album is, and this song is the most enjoyable one. Oh, Jerk is a slow, somber rock song during the verses, and then during the hook, it's a bit more energetic, keeping the rock sounding, but the drums are very pop-esque, which the Marshmallow producer credit doesn't surprise me. But hey, this is probably the one song he's touched that I like. The song's plain and simple. It's about jerks, or what I like to call them kinds, and specifically just about a person that you'd never want to see again. It's very relatable. I tried, but is a rock song about EDM percussion about a scooter accident that Oliver had when he was 18, but to be completely honest to me, it sounds like a breakup song. The chorus literally sounds like somebody confessing that they maybe were the one in the wrong, but at the same time, they gave all they could. It's an interesting thing about the song, even with the little genre bending that it gives. Introspective is a slow rock song with hip-hop percussion about being in your own head. There's also the post-chorus where everything musically becomes very ambient and wavy while Oliver's vocals are very distorted and full of reverb. That transitions so smoothly, just like every other transition into a different sound found on this album. It's a good song, but possibly the weakest one in my opinion. Gone is the closing track for the album, sounding like the ending credits to a movie, which is very fitting given how this is the last song in the last album I guess we'll ever hear from Oliver Tree. As he said on Apple Music, It's over. This is the first and last Oliver Tree album. It was fun while it lasted, but this industry is too much for me, and this is not what I want to spend my life doing. I don't want to be a 60-year-old guy with a bowl cut dancing around on stage. I can't do this anymore. I'm going to be segueing onto the next portion of moving out of music. At this point, I have no interest to make album after album for these snotty-ass fans and people who literally talk shit and make my life miserable for this art that I've dedicated my whole life making for them. I'm fucking done. I am out. Which is honestly kind of sad because this album is really good, and I would have loved to hear more from Oliver after this, but it's also understandable. I honestly would rather have him have this amazing album and only this amazing album under his belt than this album and a bunch of mediocre to trash albums and then retiring on a sequel to this album. But granted, Oliver does seem to have a trolley attitude, so maybe this is all fake. Either way, this was a great closer to an even greater album. And overall, like I was saying, this album is amazing. It's so full of bending different genres that it's easily one of the best looks at one if you're looking at commercial albums alone, or from what I've seen at least. It's also a very easy listen from start to finish, and as someone who is admittedly not a big fan of Oliver's voice, it tends to just become fine throughout the listen. I'm feeling a strong 7 to a light 8 transition. Did you give this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? Either? Nah, I'm kidding. This album's an easy 9 for me. As much as I love the genre bending on here and how great the album sounds sonically, there's a few tracks I'm just a bit eh on with not much to say, which does sadly drop the score down. But it's easily one of the greater albums to come out of 2020, and I'm so glad it is. Guys, that's the video. If you like what you saw, go ahead and leave a like. Don't be scared, it's not gonna bite. It's a JPEG, what are you fucking stupid? And if you wanna continue wasting your time on content like this, well, I don't know why, but I guess if you do, you can subscribe as well. I'm also on Twitter and Instagram. I don't really post much, but when I do, it, it's not that exciting. But fuck it, go ahead and follow me on there as well. 
especially on Twitter, because I only tweet the truth. I also make music, and if you like this album for its genre bending, then I also have a genre bending album that was released this month, and it would mean the world if you went and listened to it. In fact, all my music is basically just genre bending instrumentals with the rare vocal. So if you like that shit, most of it's up on YouTube and Bandcamp, but there's a couple songs on SoundCloud and Spotify. Spotify finally has my album as well. And I have a public community Discord server called Hellworld, where our motto is weebs and memes. I feel like that's all I have to say about it, so if you're a weeb and or you like memes, come on down. Hope you have a good day. Peace out.